Okay, everybody, welcome back. <clears throat> we are on unit eight and we are going into mood disorders and bipolar and related disorder, kind of separated on DSM-5. All right, so let's start with, remember that you need to write the symptoms, leave some space, okay, to include everything, pause if you need to, should be pausing. All right, and let's jump right in. All right, so let's start with a mood disorder and what exactly is a mood disorder um, classified in the DSM-5. And it is basically a psychological disorder that is characterized by an emotional extremes. And the two um, kind of principles that fall under there is major depressive disorder and then a bipolar. Okay, it used to be called manic depressive disorder. They changed it when they got into um, the new book. All right, so let's go into a what is the first one that is under the mood disorder, which is the major depressive disorder. And that is basically, <clears throat> now pay attention because obviously this is, you know, just like when it comes to like anxiety disorder, we all feel anxious at one point. Um, same thing here, right? There's There gets to a point that we do feel sad. You know, like what's the difference between just feeling sad for a short amount of time to what is major depressive disorder, okay? Um, and so some of the symptoms for this is that it needs to have a severe symptoms of fatigue, uh, sustained depressed mood, so it's constant, a diminished interest or pleasure in activities that they used to enjoy. There could be a decrease in appetite. There could be weight loss sleep disturbances, a uh, feeling of worthlessness, guilt, and then there could also be diminished ability to concentrate, and then um, it could also have persistent thoughts of death or suicide, okay? Now, these things, they need to last for two or more weeks, okay? And then out of those symptoms, they, the person needs to have five or more of those symptoms, okay? Um, and one of them that it has to have, it needs to have either depressed mood or a loss of interest or pleasure. So on top of those five um, categories, like it has to have five or more of those symptoms, it ha one of those symptoms have to include either a depressed mood or loss of interest or pleasure okay so this is really good to know because this is kind of that word that gets around um kind of thrown around a lot um when it comes to disorder so you know make sure that it's clear you know and this is why the dsm-5 tries to have a little bit more of these symptoms um required in order to be diagnosed okay now um, with major depressive disorder, one of the, con the conditions of this disorder is typically manifested because of an environmental trigger, okay? Um, and then also another thing you need to know about major depressive is that there is a high degree of comorbidity um, with this one that usually it's linked to other disorders as well. And typically, they are non-mood disorders. It won't be like another mood disorder, okay? Now, there is, the next one is what's called a de persistent depressive disorder. And this is basically where the depressive mood is going to last for at least two years, okay? Now, this is actually a milder form of depression in which there's no suicidal thoughts. Um, but there needs to be, for this, there needs to be two or more of these symptoms. Now, again, for two years. Um, poor appetite or overeating. Okay, so make sure to write these things down. There could be sleep disturbances, fatigue, low self-esteem, poor concentration, feelings of hopelessness, or lack of interest uh, in activities that they had enjoyed before. Okay? Okay. Um, so make sure that you um, have those things. And this is the persistent one is for two years or more. Um, now, some of the causes, and I want you to write this kind of on the, um, under this, these two, the causes 
um, for major depressive or depressive disorder <clears throat> is kind of unclear still, but there is a lot of link to neurological factors. One of them being, and make sure to write this, is that there's a deficit. What they found is a deficit in neurotransmitters, and there are three of them, and they are serotonin, dopamine, and norepinephrine. Okay, and I'll write down the norepinephrine here um, so that you guys have it. Now, typically, the treatment for somebody with major depressive disorder, what, because they have this link, would be a, um, a antidepressant medication. Okay, so maybe an SSRI, a Prozac. Um, and stuff and when we get into treatment we'll talk about that okay so just keep in mind and a good like kind of rule of thumb is that if there's a link to scientifically to like neurological factors typically one of the treatments is going to be uh, medicine okay some type of uh, medication that they've done some research now it shouldn't be the first initial thing right um, and we'll talk a little bit more when we get into treatment um, there is also a genetic link when it comes to depressive um, disorders, and if one parent has it, there is a higher risk for their child to, um, they can get that, right? Um, it's kind of like that diathesis uh, stress model in which if the environment triggers these things, and if it doesn't, then it doesn't manifest, okay? And then there is also environmental causes and those can be intense and prolonged stress it could also be traumatic events or a loss of a family member okay and then the other uh, mood disorder that you need to know it's called disruptive mood dysregulation disorder dmdd this is actually a new disorder um, that they added to the dsm-5 but this is um and why they added it, I'll explain it now, but this is actually a childhood psychological condition. So this is for children. Um, they need to be at least six years or older, okay, six years old or older. And the reason why they added this is because they started seeing a lot of kids started getting diagnosed with bipolar, um, even though they didn't really um, have those characteristics, but it was kind of like they didn't know what where to kind of put them. So they created this new one. Um, and so what is, uh, how do we characterize or what are some symptoms for DMDD? And this is um, extreme irritability, anger, and intense or frequent temper outburst, okay? The temper tantrums have to be so severe and persistent that it may actually need like clinical care, okay? Um, these emotional outbursts have to happen three or more times a week. And then um, when the child is not in an outburst, they are either really angry or irritable mood, okay? And then um, it is required that these temper tantrums, these outbursts, have to happen in at least two different settings. So it could be at home, at school, daycare and it has to last for 12 months or more, okay? So if you, the key there, right? So there's some key things, um, just because let's say a child's having temper tantrum for like a month, right? Doesn't mean that they have TMDD, okay? So these kind of, cause that is typically a very common behavior amongst children under six years old, okay? So that's why again, another criteria is six years or older and it has to be for a year. Okay, and that's basically it for kind of that category of mood disorders. All right, we're going to jump into the next one, which is um, bipolar and related disorders. And so actually the DSM-5, what they did is they kind of separated bipolar away in its own kind of chapter. Um, so it's kind of like this bridge between um, like more uh, psych psychotic disorders, um, from like schizophrenia and then, um, like depressive disorders. So kind of like an in-between. And the reason why they did this was, um, because it's such a spectrum and they were sometimes these, some, um, like there's an overlap. The symptoms can overlap 
between certain cases of schizophrenia, bipolar, and depressive disorders, okay? And one of why they kind of like group them all three together is because there is a big genetic link amongst all three, okay? Now, under bipolar disorder, there is um, a few subcategories and that, and what we're gonna focus on is bipolar one and bipolar two, okay? But there's also that clithomic, um, and then also, or substance medicated induced bipolar, and then there's like this other type of bipolar. So um, we're gonna focus on bipolar one and two, okay? But know that there is other subcategories. And again, um, I'll actually give you a paper that will have a little bit more of the different disorders and the kind of categories. All right, so we have bipolar one, okay? So bipolar one, is basically where it's a mood disorder that the person experiences experiences at least one manic episode. And write that down, I'll write it here for spelling, a manic episode or mania, and then an episode of major depressive, okay? That's why it's bipolar two complete opposites. Now, you need to understand what a manic episode will look like, okay? And a manic episode is basically an ab a state of abnormally elevated mood and intensely high energy, okay, that actually disrupts daily life, okay? Like all of the disorders, they have to be able to, they're, not that they have to, they do disrupt daily life, okay? Now, in a manic episode, what they will feel is, and make sure to have this in there, is either excessive euphoria, like they feel like they're on top of the world. There can be feelings of this grandiose, like they're untouchable, kind of like um, grander than life, okay? They can also be extremely irritable, okay, or unhappy. Uh, they can begin projects like beyond their skill levels or their talents. They tend to be a lot more impulsive, okay? they have less sleep, like they could function and be like super hyper and all this energy um, with maybe like two hours of sleep. Um, also, they're, they're, when they're speaking, they have so many ideas that it's just like, their thoughts are going so fast that they're just speaking in just different, um, kind of like the same talk of topic, but it goes off and goes into another one. Um, they can be oversensitive or show fewer sexual inhibitions, okay? Um, these, during a manic episode, they could, like, since they're a lot more impulsive, they could start spending all their money, investing in things, opening businesses, okay? So, which can create a huge problem. Now, sometimes um, they can also experience what's called hypomania, Okay, and hypomania is just basically a less severe um, episode of a manic episode. Okay, it's like a hypomania, it's just less than. Um, now, in order to be considered bipolar one, they have to have had a full manic episode, not a hypomania. Okay, and that would be different. Um, now, Eventually, what happens in bipolar is that they will go from this manic, where like high strong, high energy, to then all of a sudden their mood will go to major depressive, right? Like two extremes. Now, um, please note that this does not happen like from one hour to the next. This happens in days or weeks, sometimes months it can happen. Okay, um, typically in manic episode, they're not in that manic episode as long as like the depressive episode, and it just kind of depends. Now, there is also bipolar 2. This is bipolar 2 is a less severe um, symptoms of these two extremes. Now, this one is in bipolar 2 is they're experiencing hypomania but they never experience a manic episode, okay? That's the big difference between them. Now, when they, uh, when they move to, their mood moves to 
the uh, depressive stage um, here they're going to have the same symptoms as major depressive disorder okay so like fatigue depressed mood diminished interest they decrease appetite weight loss more sleep disturbances feeling of worthlessness okay so it's kind of the same symptoms and the same kind of category that has to be five or more um um so that's you know the two extremes there okay and that's basically it for this nice and sh short and sweet